Oh, <laughs> whoa, I didn't see you there. Caught me in a little bit of a compromising position, you might say, with uh, quite a lot of inventory here on the shelves. Um, no, in all seriousness, we're going through a really interesting, I didn't realize how interesting this purchase would be. And I was just like, you know what, Spanky, we got to turn the camera on and show the people what the heck is happening. So you may be able to see, uh, this is the first part of a complete N64 collection, as you can clearly see from these four titles that I just showed you. Um, but what's interesting about it is it's all in varying stages of completion. Um, what I mean by that is a lot of it is cart only. The unfortunate thing about this lot is they do all have these very sticky stickers on the top uh, that are going to be very difficult to get off. We'll have to pick and choose which ones we really want to pick at, if you know what I mean. Um, ooh, that's a pretty nice Pokemon Stadium right there. The other unfortunate thing about this lot, and then I'll get into some great things, is... Uh, you can kind of see on this copy, a lot of them have like a little bit of almost chalkiness on the sides. The reason for that is they were shipped with no padding. So you can kind of get a look in here. I just opened this box up. Um, and so when that happens, when they all like, ooh, it, yeah, and it looks really bad on this uh, Pokemon Stadium here. They'll all kind of get jiggled together a whole bunch and rub up on one another in the same parts over and over again. And it starts to kind of rub some of the plastic off. It looks like, luckily, and this is something that I've been doing with a rag that has, oh, there it is, a little Clorox wipe. Most of the time, I've just been able to sort of wipe the schmutz off. Although, that's got some a little extra layer of schmutz. Um, but anyways, not the hugest deal so far. Those are the two negative things so far about this like huge purchase. And as you can see here, we've got three more boxes, uh, large priority boxes to go. And I'll take you guys as well. Ooh, take a look at this. This is kind of fun. A little official N64 bag that came with the lot. The other thing that came with it is all of these boxes. Now, I'm unsure how many of these uh, actually have partners. I'm somewhat sure because I have a price charting list that tells me all the games that come with game and box or game box and manual. Um, but I'm not sure, like, I'm pretty sure there weren't two NHL breakaways. I feel like there may be an extra box there. So it'll be interesting to see as we're like going through and trying to pair everything. By the way, this is, I think, definitely the most efficient way to ship complete in box retro games if you're going to is breaking them all down one thing that i like uh forgive me what is the seller's name here the viewer nicholas nicholas one thing that i really like that you did is uh kept all the manuals inside the crushed boxes like with this v rally um so in here we can just pull out we've got manual oh looks like it came with a poster and the uh little precautions manual so I don't have to go searching for that. If all of these were separate, then it'd be even a longer process of finding the manual, finding the box, and then going and finding the games. The bright side of having all the games labeled on their uh, top edges or their spines or whatever you would call it. Ooh, we got Mario Golf there, Mario 64. Ooh, that reminds me, I have to show you guys a couple gems that we've come across so far. Um, so the benefit of having the stickers on the top labels of all of these games Quake and Rugrats and Shadow Man is that it is easier to go and pair them when we do have a, uh, you know, a box that we're like, oh, I don't know, does it have the game or not? We can look pretty quickly. I'll walk you guys through. This is the first box that I went through here. Woo! And here are some of the high dollar gems that we're going to be at some point in the future. Now, granted, one thing that you guys also may be able to see over here is we've got this is, you're, you're catching us kind of in the middle of like a regular processing day. Right now we're getting together a whole bunch of lower dollar game bundles for our next whatnot auction. That's going to happen, I don't know, when is that, what did we say? Sometime May 17th. May, May 17th, that's going to happen. Um, so that's first on the docket. Second on the docket is going to be, why don't you follow me over here, and then I promise we'll get to the N64 gems. Uh, I recently did some reorganization of the reselling space. This is all of our whatnot stuff because, folks, this is going to be uploaded in non-chronological order, so you can't tell anybody on the main channel that we're, that I'm showing you this. A lot of this stuff is from RGT85's 
uh, $40,000 collection that we recently bought. The video on that is coming soon, don't you guys worry. Um, actually, multiple videos. Yesterday, we spent the whole day just breaking everything down and doing a deep dive into it. Anyways, each one of these bins basically represents more or less a single auction that we can do. So, like, this one is, like, almost all Sega Saturn and Master System stuff. If you want to get a look at some of the top titles here. I don't, the lighting in this corner of the office is so bad. Um, I tell you guys all of this basically just to say that we've got what essentially could be probably like, I don't know, seven or eight healthy sized whatnot options before we're actually able to get to the N64 stuff. Maybe we'll throw it in there a little bit sooner. I'm teasing you guys. It's not really fair for you N64 collectors, but here's the other thing that I did want to show you. We've got some high dollar gems here. A couple of sealed games. Now, at first I was like, oh no, because these were shipped. They didn't have plastic protectors. I actually just put these on there because this one and the Mega Man 64 are sealed. So at first I was like, oh no, that that's really dangerous. Um, I realized that these actually were only listed as um, complete rather than sealed. And this is the reality of buying large collections like this. This one was five figures in value, um, you're going to almost always have some negative surprises and some positive surprises. I like as much as possible, if I can, to give enough wiggle room that, for them to hopefully equal out, more or less. What I'm saying is like, okay, there's a lot more stickers to deal with and a lot more damage like to plastic that has to be rubbed off than I was expecting on the regular uh, games here. And all of that labor really adds up in terms of the costliness of going through a lot and reselling everything. But at the same time, there's some stuff like this that was undervalued in price charting. So it's basically my goal with everything that I buy to, if there were, for example, like 10 games like this, I would reach out and say, hey, um, there's a lot more value here than you honestly said. I can pay more if there were no um, like condition issues with anything else. More often than not, there ends up being some positive and some negative surprises in each lot, and so it kind of cancels out. I don't like making deductions when I don't have to. Um, every once in a while we'll have to because something is significantly worse than price charting or than was previously agreed upon. Another little freebie bundle that I think Nicholas threw in for us that I didn't see anywhere on price charting, maybe I just missed it, is a whole bunch of random little manuals I think that he probably just had laying around for different systems. We've got a Styanex, we've got... Uh, this one looks like maybe a poster, a promotional poster for various NES games, which is kind of fun. We've got, like, uh, Plug Into the Power, Nintendo Power. There's a lot of, uh, Dreamcast manuals in here, actually, which can be really hard to find. Another poster. Uh, ooh, House of the Dead 2. That's a really solid one to see. Uh... Evil Dead, so like some really solid stuff in here. I don't normally sell a lot of loose manuals, but it's the kind of thing that maybe, like, I don't know, if one of you guys are in one of our future whatnot auctions and you're like, hey, do you still have that Evil Dead manual? Maybe we'll dig it out for you, because I know that we, we go the extra mile for our uh, for our P-Sale watchers. We just sold a uh, Tomba, or Tomba, I don't honestly know how to say it, um, in our last auction that wasn't listed, but someone was like, hey, I just saw the last P-Sale video. Could you guys get that? And we did. Um, Grandia 2 is another really solid one. So anyway, before we wrap this up, wait a second, there were a couple other things. A couple other things I wanted to show you guys from the gem, from the gem uh, bin here. So we've got a few, like, boxed titles here, but the craziest one that I honestly didn't, I had kind of forgotten was in this lot, is Super Bowling. A lot of you guys may not know, this is like, even loose, I just saw one sell that was in pristine condition for $800. Uh, this one, I do believe, I opened it up. It is authentic. I checked the board and everything like that. Really, the only sign of wear is this little, it looks like someone maybe tried to clean it and it got a little bit stained there. Or even, maybe that's not coming across on the camera. Maybe um, a little diarrhea? <laughs> hopefully not diarrhea. Somebody wiped their booty with this? No. Uh, overall, really solid condition on the Super Bowling. Um, and then we've got, some of you guys may have seen already, Stunt Racer casually in here, which is like 300 bucks. And I wanted to find, oh, here it is, the Not For Resale 
Super Mario 64. I don't think I've ever had one of these, or at least if I did, maybe I accidentally sold it as regular. Um, I don't, I think I would notice that. These go, well, these go for like, uh, I don't know, 200 to 250 or so normally. Um, Rush 2049 was one that I didn't really expect to have value. Rat Attack, I'm pretty sure has at least some. I, I put it in the singles box because the thing that everything in this box right now has in common is it's all been sorted as like this doesn't go to Amazon, but it's also too valuable to put in a bundle. Mischief Makers. Uh, and the stuff that doesn't go to Amazon is mostly just because it sells so slow that uh, I don't want to risk paying long-term storage fees on it. Um, but before I let you guys go, just wanted to give you guys a, a brief update into the business of Phoenix Resale. Uh, a little behind the scenes, because that's what we do over here on P-Sale. Uh, is I just wanted to start going through this and, and let you guys know what the heck I'm seeing. Maybe we'll open another one. We'll see. Uh, okay, this one, Mario Tennis. Is there a Mario Golf? Or was it Mario Tennis? Uh, Mario Party. Party 2. I'm going to take all these Mario games over there, and we'll see if we can find... Uh, some way to complete them. Ooh, Quest 64, I'm almost sure we have a box for. Basically what I've been doing is going through the boxes and trying to kind of memorize them. Olympics, Ogre Battle? Do we have that? I don't think we have that box. Um, NBA Jam, I know there are a few NBA games. Let's take these ones over there though and see if we can complete anything. Aha, right off the bat folks. Mario Tennis, do we have a manual? We do a manual, a some sort of a, okay, player's guide offer inside, and the uh, little warning booklet. This thing looks really clean. This might be one of the best condition, fully complete N64 games we have. Love to see that. Very satisfying. The game itself also looks really good. Ooh, who else feels that? Who else feels that satisfaction in their soul? There should be like a YouTube channel just dedicated to like, ASMR completing retro games. I I was going to say I'd watch it. I wouldn't watch that, but I don't know. Some weirdos would. <laughs> so we got one. We got one here. Uh, this one. Do we have a regular Mario 64? Because I don't think... I think, by definition, the not-for-resale ones wouldn't come with the box, right? Weren't they shipped to game stores loose or did they have a box i don't know this this box though doesn't say not for resale anywhere on it uh we do have a mario golf box i knew it i, I thought that there should be one in there but i didn't see one mario party one and two and we're also looking for quest 64 here this will be a good chance to show off a few more of these uh okay a lot of sports a lot of sports is this whole thing sports oh we actually do have blitz 01 somewhere up there triple play there are a bunch of blitz boxes is that like a super common one Ooh. That's kind of that's kind of nice. I actually am gonna save this to put in one of the higher dollar games. Actually, maybe Conquers. No, it looks like Conquers does have uh, the insert in here. Um, we'll put this to the side, and anytime I have like a decent game that is missing the insert, that'll be really nice to put in there. Because a lot of these uh, boxes, most of them, honestly, I I think uh, are missing the insert. That's something that. Ooh. Dark Rift. I'm triggered. This isn't supposed to be Rift space. Get out of here, Rift. Ooh, Clay Fighter 63 and a half. So this is a perfect example um, of one that I may just go ahead and stick that insert in so that I can say uh, it's box and insert no manual with the game. This one does have a little bit of, you can see in comparison to the back, a little bit of sun fading. I don't know where this Quest 64 got off to. Well, I may just have a little bit of a chore for myself for later. Oh, this is another one that I didn't really... Know. What's this guy's name again? Uh, it's Mar either Jose Maria Olathabal or Sevi Ballesteros. Wow. Um, European golfer from the 90s that Spencer somehow knew about. Uh, I didn't realize this in complete condition is like an over $100 game. Who knew? I probably would have put it in the bundle section if I hadn't seen the value on the price charting list. Um, anything else of note in here? We talked about Ogre Battle. We talked about, we got uh, a bunch of NBA games. Aha, here's Mario Golf. Um, where is it supposed to, and, and now I've lost the box. This is going to be a problem. This is going to be a consistent problem. 
Oh, geez. Let's go ahead and open up one more box and then I'll let you guys go. This has been so fun. It's been, I know, I know I've been neglecting pea sale a little bit. Um, and the reason is not because I don't love you guys. I promise. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. But uh, when you buy, uh, you know, the largest collection that you ever have, sometimes you, you kind of have to go into scramble mode, especially when it's in the middle of convention season. Ooh. Okay, this is kind of a cool one to... We got International Superstar Soccer 64. Does that have, It doesn't feel like it has the game in it, though. Oh, no. Oh, no. What did I just say? I spoke too soon. We've got a box of loose manuals, folks. Oh, no. So, I guess maybe these would be, like, ones that didn't have the box anyway? No, because I'm pretty sure I have that box. Oh, we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to do another round of uh, trying to complete three different things. This is cool though. This is a little promotional uh, clear N sixty four case with banjo and kazooie on there. I've seen one of this for Road Rash, I believe. Uh, or maybe I bought a Road Rash that was in one of these. But these on their own can go for I think twenty plus dollars. And, oh yeah, the manual's spanky. They go all the way down. <laughs> Almost. Oh, boy. What do we have? Oh, Conkers. Holy cow, that's a valuable one. That one just popped out at us. I don't know if this was like... We're definitely going to have to do some research into the, uh, the price charting sheet. I'll have to double check because we have over here the uh, box and now we have the manual. Was it listed as box and game and like the manual stack was just thrown in? Was this supposed to be kind of inside here and shipped that way like the other, a lot of the other ones were? I don't know. <laughs> we're going to have to do some more research and, you know, that's, that's part of processing deals like this is just kind of figuring out what's all here. Is there anything missing? Are there extras? And at the end of the day, what do we owe the seller? But thanks a bunch to Nicholas for thinking about us and reaching out. I know that Shipping for this lot, because it was so heavy and compact, it ended up being most efficient to just do it all in large flat rate boxes, which isn't super common. Um, most of the time it's more efficient to go for larger boxes because it's a, the weight is a little bit more spread out. But folks, Spanky and I are going to get back to simultaneously listing stuff on whatnot for our next show and processing this large viewer purchase. And later tonight, I'm actually headed off to Retropalooza to uh, hang out in Houston with Game Chaser Jay and some other folks. It'll be my first time out there at Retropalooza, so I'm pretty excited to see what the heck the, ha the show has for me. I was actually supposed to leave at like 5 a.m. this morning, and my flight was canceled. So here I am, hanging out with you guys, and uh, bye.